Question number 12. For each figure below, determine if the two smaller triangles in each diagram are congruent. If so, write an appropriate triangle congruent statement. You do not have to make a flow chart. Nice. Then solve for x. If the triangles are not congruent, explain why not. Okay, so let's take a look at A. Um, they want me to talk about the parts of these triangles and whether or not they're congruent. And I can't do it because they didn't label it. So I'm just going to go ahead and arbitrarily call this point A. I'll call this B. That did not turn out well. Let me try that again. That's B. This is C. And I'll call this point D. And if I look at this, you can see that they both have this side right here with two tick marks in, in the... Why did I do a... Why did I do a lowercase d? Let me do a capital D. That looks better. And this part right here. So they those are congruent sides. So uh, clearly AD is congruent to CB. That's given from the diagram. Also, I've got this congruent angle, right? Angle ADB is congruent to angle CBD. That's given congruent. The other thing that I've got going on here is they both share side BD. So I can say BD is congruent to itself because of the reflexive property. And because that is in both of the triangles, right, that could be used for one of our, um, our parts. So these two triangles are congruent. They are congruent by the, uh, what is it, side angle side congruence condition. I can see the sides are the, the mark, ones I marked with red and then the angles in yellow and then that other side is the one marked in blue. So SAS. And in fact, the triangles that are congruent, I would say triangle A to D to B is congruent to triangle, I have to follow the same pattern, C to B to D. So those triangles are congruent by side angle side. And now that we have that, right, I've got all of these things marked with uh, these expressions with X. And here's what I can do. I can notice, I, and I am going to notice, and I'll use orange for this noticing, that this, in the first triangle, I've got this segment A to B, right? A, no, not, mm, not AB. It's the segment AD. AD. And in the other triangle, notice I've got this segment C, B. Yeah, those are marked congruent in red. What's your point? Oh, yeah, you make a good point. I don't make a good point. So let's look at another pair. I, th I think this is what I intend to do, but I got distracted. Uh, let's look at the one that goes from A to B. That's what I said originally. So I'm talking about this segment right here. You can see a, B, and notice what goes with that, C, D goes with that right here. So if you think about this, if I have triangles that are congruent, then all their corresponding parts are congruent. I know these triangles are congruent because they had side, angle, side. But now that I've said, hey, their triangles are congruent by side, angle, side, I can extend it and say, because the triangles are congruent, their corresponding parts are congruent, right? In fact, this is something I used to write down and at a different time for a different course I taught, we would say that the corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And I, I, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of that, but, but what it's saying is if you've got congruent triangles, then their corresponding parts are congruent, right? Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So that's what that means if you ever see that. So what that allows me to do is because these sides that I'll mark with just a single tick mark, because those sides are congruent because of CPCTC, because they are corresponding parts of congruent triangles, we can say that their lengths have to be the same. They have to be equal in length. And if they're equal in length, then certainly 6 times x plus 6 must be the same as 8x plus 2. That has to be true. And I can solve that by, I'll take away 6 uh, factors of x, or 6... I'll take away the term 6x from the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So that's going to give me 6 is equal to 2x plus 2. And if I take away 2 from both sides, that'll give me 4 is equal to 2x. Therefore, 2 is what x is. So I know that x is 2. And the question did ask me to say, it asked me to solve 4x. So I've, I've finished this. 
I could come back in here and say, oh, if x is 2, that means this is 12 plus 6. This is 18 units long. And then this is uh, 2 times 8 is 16, 17, 8. This is also 18 units long. So when x is 2, 6x plus 6 is the same as 8x plus 2. So there you go. They were congruent by side, angle, side. And uh, x was 2. All right, let's go into part B. Part B definitely am going to need to label some parts here. So I'm going to call this, and this is just arbitrary. I'll call this A. I'll call this B. I think I'm going to need this point. I'm going to call that C. I'll call this D. And I'll call this E. So my question is, can I establish that these triangles are congruent by one of our triangle congruence conditions? And... I don't think I can from just what I see, but I think an application of the Pythagorean theorem might help. So I'm going to just label this piece right here from C to D, and I could I could figure out how long that part is using the Pythagorean theorem. In fact, I would I could write um, so CD is a leg. You can see here's my right angle, so I've got a leg. So if I take that leg CD and I square that leg. And I add to that the other leg squared, right? I will get the hypotenuse squared, the 41 squared. So if I set out to solve this, um, so I'll just rewrite this CD squared plus, ooh, 40 squared. What is that? Well, you know what? Let's not do that. Let's not do that. Let's go ahead and just say cd squared, I'm going to subtract 40 squared from both sides, is equal to 41 squared minus 40 squared. So cd is going to equal the square root of 41 squared minus 40 squared. So I need to find that difference and then, and then find the square root, find the difference first. So I've got 41 squared minus 40 squared. There's the difference, and there's, ah, oh, and that's a square root that I actually have recognized. So CD ends up, the principal root there is 9. So the length of segment CD is 9 units long. I can put this right here. This is 9. And what's convenient about that is now I can mark a few things congruent. Clearly, this segment is congruent to this segment because they're both 9 units long. That's the definition of congruent segments. If segments are congruent, they have the same length. Or if segments have the same length, then they're congruent. And also, I've got that this leg, the one that's marked, these are both marked 40, so I'll put three tick marks on there. And then let's finish this off by pointing out that I've got this angle. This right, right angles are congruent. Uh, you know, let me just point this out. I was tempted to say hypotenuse leg, but I don't know both. The way I've done this problem, I don't know both of my hypotenuses are congruent. But I do know that since these angles are 90 degrees, these angles have to be congruent. So I end up getting, the way I've done this, I get um, side, angle, side, congruence again. So the two triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. And which triangles? Well, I could say triangle B, whoops, triangle symbol, triangle B, A, D is congruent to triangle, let's see, I went B, A, D, that would be C, D, E, triangle C, D, E. Great. Triangle bad is congruent to triangle C, D, E. And by side, angle, side. So the other thing that happens is mm, I now need to figure out the value of X. And I think you've guessed it. Uh, since it's the case that um, these two segments here, right, B, D, and CE are both the hypotenuses of those triangles. They have to be congruent to each other also. So I could say BD, you can see that is X plus 9. And that has to equal CE, which is 41. So if I just take and I subtract 40, <laughs> 41, if I take and I subtract 9 from both sides, I get 41 minus 9, which is 32. So X is 32. And that's what they were asking, <clears throat> asking for. So <clears throat> that's it for, uh, what, what was this, question Question 9, 12. There we go. So it turns out they were both congruent to each other. And actually, the way I did the second one, they both ended up being congruent by side, angle, side.